Hello everyone, Tavi Ginario here from EliteGuitarist.com. Today I have the pleasure to sit together with uh, my dear friend Pepe Romero. Pepe, welcome. Tavi, thank you for having me. It's a yeah. pleasure to be here. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you here. And today, uh, in this conversation, uh, we're going to present some of the guitars that Pepe makes. Um, and um, I hope you'll find this very helpful and informative. We're going to play them, demonstrate them, you'll be able to to hear the various um, uh, peculiarities of each instrument. And uh, as we get started, Pepe, would you just briefly introduce yourself? How long have you been building? How did you get started in this? I'm Pepe Romero Jr. My father is Pepe Romero Sr., the legendary guitar player. Um, I've been building guitars since January of 1997 is when I strung up my first one. So. Uh, mm -hmm. 26 years just about and I'm more in love with it today even than the day mm. I started. Uh, I grew up in a family who lives and breathes the guitar, who's completely in love with the guitar and that love came through me except I knew I didn't love the guitar as a player enough to achieve greatness. Mm -hmm. uh, I watched my family work incredibly hard playing all day, every day, very methodically, and I knew I didn't have that mm -hmm. in me mm -hmm. to be a great guitarist. Mm -hmm. But it didn't matter because I love to play guitar. I still have the love of playing guitar and enjoying it for my own self. Um, but I fell in love with woodshop uh, in junior high school, and I took woodworking through high school, and I fell in love with that, and my grandfather saw that love of woodworking in mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. uh, he passed away before I ever built a guitar, but he wanted he, he wanted me to build guitars. Uh, told me I'm a guitar builder right before he died, mm -hmm. and I thought he was kind of mm -hmm. uh, crazy at mm -hmm. that point. But I he passed away, and I wanted to build a guitar for him in his honor, and uh, I had the chance to do that with Dave Chapagan and the winter of 96, 97. And upon completion of that guitar, it was a, a very powerful un realization that my grandfather mm. was right, that I am mm -hmm. a guitar builder, and that was my path. So uh, I never looked back. I went all out since uh, early January 1997 and found my, my calling, uh, mm. what I love to do. And in my workshop, I can work all day, every day, and go home and dream about it mm, uh, it's, it's wonderful uh, I've, I've been very blessed to be here and mm -hmm. to get to build these instruments for work mm -hmm. um, today I brought a couple of guitars that I made myself and I brought three guitars that are my designs made by Wolfgang Yellinghouse the mm -hmm. line of guitars is Guitars Romero mm -hmm. and I'm excited to share them with you and uh, to hear it the great master Tavi oh, on them. On. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> uh, thank you, Pepe. Uh, I look forward to playing all these guitars. Before you came, I, I told one of my students, I had a morning lesson, mm. and I said, uh, Pepe Romero is coming over. And he said, um, uh, Pepe Romero Sr. or the Luthier? What that tells me is that Perhaps in the beginning, people knew you as Pepe Romero, the son of the great Spanish guitarist. But now, people know you on your own standing because of your own accomplishments in Luthiery. Uh, and thus, that question, which one? Um, I, I and I thought, that. Uh, that is really telling. Uh, that over these last 20-some years since you've been building, you've been building some 300... How many instruments have you built? I have <clears throat> I've made 380 guitars mm -hmm. and 225 ukuleles um, in my workshop in, in San Diego. That is a ferocious speed uh, for building. I appreciate the com the comment about uh, which Pepe uh, my father and I enjoy a confusion which I'll get emails of people who think we are one person mm -hmm. and they think you know he's playing concerts and building guitars and they can't believe it and our you know secret weapon is we are two people <laughs> but uh, I have no disillusion to try and 
equal what my father has done. He's a, a true legend, but he's a beautiful human being. Mm -hmm. And we together are having so much fun mm -hmm. as player, builder, mm -hmm. father, son, mm -hmm. with the guitar. You know, we're on this guitar journey together. Uh, I've learned a tremendous amount from him. Mm -hmm. He plays almost every guitar. There are some that go out while he's on tour, mm -hmm. but almost every guitar I get his true feedback, uh, mm -hmm. wishes, desires, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm having so much fun with my father yeah. on that. And, and you can rely on his honest feedback, right? Which is yes. what's helping you grow and revise. and Definitely. But we are two people, and uh, I am... The guitar builder. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Um, tell us about this new line of guitars. These are more affordable instruments, but I have to say, I played them at the San Luis Obispo Guitar Festival, and I was just so impressed with the quality. Thank wow. you. This uh, is a guitarist Romero guitar. So I build my own guitars in San Diego in my workshop, one at a time. And I have my brother-in-law doing French polish, mm -hmm. and I do all the building, and that's the extent as to how many people are building those guitars. And I wanted to have a line of guitars that was more obtainable. Uh, if you want a guitar from me, it takes three or four years, and the price point is quite high. Mm -hmm. uh, guitars from Mero are available now, and they are master-grade guitars built by Wolfgang Gellinghaus and his crew of six builders and they are my designs mm -hmm. so together teaming up with Wolfgang I'm able to offer a world-class guitar at an affordable price that's available right now mm -hmm. and I'm really proud of these instruments I believe in them uh, I think that they will stand up next to some of the great handmade uh, mm -hmm. custom shop instruments mm -hmm. they're just Truly wonderful instruments that will inspire the player, and they inspire me. Mm -hmm. So, and they are handmade, and they are custom shop, just not made here. Correct. Which really allows the cost to come down. Right. Uh, but they all bear your fingerprint. They do. They're they're my design. They're once they're built, they come into my workshop for final inspection, final setup. Um, they don't need much. They come mm -hmm. really ready to go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll need to touch up. They're French polished. Um, so that is amazing mm -hmm. to, to add mm -hmm. into that price point. And then the material selection is really top of the line. This has a Swiss moon spruce top and East Indian rosewood body with a French polished finish, a Spanish cedar neck, and uh, built as I would want them to be built. That's wonderful. What is this particular guitar? This is a, the Negra, which is a flamenco Negra. This is based on a, some cross between a Santos Hernandez and an Antonio de Torres. I wanted the early 1900s style flamenco mm -hmm. guitar because I still want my flamenco guitar to sound beautiful for classical music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the setup is low. It has a tap plate. It will get... You know, you can dig in and get a, a grit from playing hard rascaillado mm -hmm. techniques. But if you back off and play melodically, you're going to just have a beautiful classical guitar. Mm -hmm. So for me, that is the Spanish guitar. And that's what the, the negra is. Mm -hmm. Can we hear maybe some of the flamenco flavors? Yeah. <laughs> does sound like a legitimate flamenco guitar but it also has a sweetness to it it's not as percussive or or uh, dry as more modern guitars um, yeah I think that's what you'll find uh, a similarity to the Santos Hernandez mm -hmm. who is one of my heroes in guitar building would you like to yeah if you I would love to try it as well
it's a beautiful guitar a fast response um, it feels really easy to play and it's nice to have an instrument that could cross between those two territories yeah it's the like I said the, the Spanish guitar <coughs> mm -hmm. and beautifully played by you thank you Beautiful. Thank what you. else do we have? This is the Guitarras Romero Espana model. This is a traditional classical guitar modeled after the great Spanish guitars from the 1970s. Mm -hmm. uh, the bracing is designed with a five fan brace and a treble bar like a Miguel Rodriguez mm -hmm. 1970s, which is the guitar that I grew up hearing most around the house. Uh, my family always had a, a wonderful collection of guitars out by a variety of builders, but gravitated when it was go time to record or play concerts. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. was those, uh, Rodriguez. those Miguel Rodriguez guitars. So this is the Espana model. All the guitars in Mero have a 650 scale mm -hmm. and a 52 millimeter nut. So those Rodriguez's had wider nuts mm -hmm. and a lot of them had longer right. scale, but this one is going to be industry standard. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of lean profiled mm -hmm. neck and uh, what I want to achieve with this guitar is a big warm powerful sound mm -hmm. but has that majestic vintage Spanish quality to mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so uh, everything is about beautiful sound production Wonderful. and then a lot of it mm -hmm. when you dig mm -hmm. in yeah, this guitar, I heard it before, is not just loud, but it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. This has a western red cedar top, mm -hmm. an East Indian rosewood body, and again, French polish. Wonderful. Can we hear it? Yeah. For those of you who are watching this recording, what you don't feel through the recording is the amount of air that the guitar pumps in terms of volume and, and just power and projection. It's really spectacular. Yeah. This Every part of this guitar is designed when you pluck the string to vibrate and move and uh, transmit that energy down, you know, the headstock, the neck, the top, the mm -hmm. sides, the back. Mm -hmm. Everything is in motion and you, you hear the the volume but you also feel it on your body mm -hmm. which is something i love about yeah. the the spanish guitar it's lightly built mm -hmm. but not you know not weak right but everything comes together to to produce that mm -hmm. sound mm -hmm. especially love the trebles on this one.
beautiful. Love this guitar. My grandfather had a philosophy that when you play music, that the note vibrates and goes on mm. infinitely, mm -hmm. and that it's so important to make every note beautiful because mm -hmm. it will live on forever. Mm -hmm. And I take that to heart as I build instruments mm -hmm. or design instruments yeah. that those should produce beautiful notes. And when I hear you play, it's uh, you would make him proud with what you're oh, putting out you. into the into the universe. Thank you. It's you know it, it's always it's a combination of everything, right? The luthier, the guitar, the instrument, the atmosphere, the player. Yeah. It all comes together, and it's a, I think it's a collaborative process. Yeah, I think when yeah. it comes from the heart, you you hear mm -hmm. it, you feel it, and uh, what I do, whether I design the instrument or I build the instrument, I my promise to uh, to the world mm -hmm. is to do it with the goal of beauty in mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's yeah. something I really admire about your work is without ever talking about that with mm -hmm. you, it's clear that you, you're you approaching it in that way as well. Thank you. Yeah. If it's not beautiful, it's not worth it. That's right. right. And what we're talking here is not just aesthetic beauty, physical beauty. It's just the beauty of the tone and the, the interaction of the Musically, music. Yeah. yes. Tonally, sonically. Yeah, you know, the, I played this one earlier, but what uh, struck me this time around is the ease. I, I don't have to fight the guitar. And even to produce a warm tone, sometimes you have to kind of fight the instrument to get it to respond. This one is right there immediately. So easy. Yeah, the, across the board, the guitars from Romero have a warmth. Mm -hmm. And my design philosophy in guitar building goes back to having the goal of the old Spanish mm -hmm. sound, mm -hmm. the, the tone production, the guitars of Santos Hernandez and mm -hmm. Antonio de Torres, and then my biggest hero, Miguel Rodriguez. That tone has to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If that tone isn't there, I don't want the guitar. So the guitars I make myself will have it, and even these guitars, which are a much lower price point than my handmade guitars they have that at their at their core mm -hmm. it's beautiful and truth be told if you gave me a blind test and just put the guitar in front of me didn't tell me what it was mm -hmm. and then you told me it was a 1980 you know miguel rodriguez yeah I'd say oh i think that he made guitars in the 80s right he did yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, that sounds like a Rodriguez, yeah, well, which is really, really wonderful. That's the highest praise mm -hmm. and amazing for the, the guitars Romero. Yeah, and I want to say, you know, we're talking about prices of guitars here. And, uh, you know, you could buy guitars for a quarter million dollars or half a million dollars for a Torres. Uh, and to some of you who may be watching this video, um, I... I always want to be sensitive. I realize that you may be living in a different context and you, to hear that a guitar is lower priced than the right. other guitars, but $3,500 seems shocking. And um, it's, I, still, I, uh, it's still a, a substantial amount of money. It's, it's, a, not, it's, cheap. Mm -hmm. it's not cheap. Yeah. It's not cheap. And so I don't want us to be insensitive right. to your particular context because... I know when I was growing up, I didn't have a guitar of my own. You know, my father was making $80 a month. And so even that amount right. seemed... So we we realize that. And I just want to say we're sensitive to that. And I hope this doesn't take away from your pleasure of listening to these instruments. And yeah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's. I wouldn't consider them cheap, but yes, mm -hmm. it's the relative comparison in where the my custom guitar mm -hmm. prices are and where these are. Sure. This is a is going to be more achievable to mm -hmm. to many, mm -hmm. and I wish I could make them for everybody. Right, yeah. and I, you know, we live in in a world of scarcity yeah. of resources and time. For those of you who live in a more affluent context, like the U.S. or you know Western Europe, um, thirty five hundred dollars for a guitar like this. It, it's a really yeah. an amazing deal. These these guitars are handmade mm -hmm. by master craftsmen using the top materials mm -hmm. available, and they're French polished. And there's just not a way to do it uh, yeah. for and less. It, yeah. yeah, right, right. And to me, the fact that you do all the quality control that these guitars do not reach 
the owners. Right, they come through my hands. That's right. Yeah. To me, that's 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 where the value is. Because I know your obsession with quality and care for your clients, and and so if it goes through your hands, it's it's good. It has to be. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay, should we take a look at more guitars? We wait. <laughs> there is more. That's right. Okay, tell us about this third guitar. This is the Guitarist Romero LR, which stands for lattice brace top and a raised fingerboard. Uh, the raised fingerboard is to give easier access up high mm-hmm. as the player goes beyond the 12th fret. This is a much more modern approach to classical guitar building mm-hmm. than the mm-hmm. Negra or the Espana model. My roots stand firmly in that traditional approach. Mm-hmm. I wanted to offer something to those who are after the modern guitar Mm -hmm. and typically what I find with a lattice brace top, uh, this also has a fluorocarbon set of strings, is that they become overly bright and Mm -hmm. a little bit too brittle. Mm -hmm. Um, The way that Wolfgang is building this instrument, uh, it still has a warmth and a substance to the note that I haven't heard in too many guitars built in this way. Mm -hmm. Uh, So this LR is really special to me to be able to offer something with a modern approach, but still have that fundamental traditional Spanish sound Mm -hmm. in the the low end frequencies. Right. Right. What I found with lattice bracing instruments generally, there's always, and this is again my subjective opinion, they seem to be a little bit monochromatic. It's challenging to get a variety of tones as you move your hand or you have to work overtime to get a ponticello or a dolce Um, but playing this guitar uh, it was really easy to achieve all those tonal colors and so if it's okay with you i'll play something on the guitar that that will allow you to distinguish all the tonal colors of this guitar and and the depth and the breadth and when i played it in san luis obispo um, I was blown away. Oh, thank you. Because in my mind, and this is, you know, I came with certain prejudices to this guitar. I'm also firmly planted in the old tradition of playing the guitar, yeah. where it's, it's not an exercise in gymnastics. It's it's a uh, it's really playing for beauty, and and uh, as your father says, play it for beauty. Yeah. Um, and so I often associate lattice bracing guitars because of having seen them, with more modern ways of playing, which is more technical, not as expressive perhaps, a little bit more shallow from an emotional point of view. Uh, But when I played this guitar, I was really impressed with it, and I I loved it. Thank you. I I feel the same way about it. Uh, Also, all this being said, this is opinion, Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm presenting guitars that I like, Mm -hmm. based on where where I come from, the sound I want to hear what I want to feel when I play Mm -hmm. and when I put these out into the world you're going to get an instrument that I really really enjoy but I don't put my opinions as law and uh, they're subjective right so with this is something I'm really proud of I'm happy to offer Mm -hmm. and uh, there are lattice brace guitars that are wonderful Mm -hmm. I usually don't love them, but there are Mm -hmm. a variety within that. There are also traditional guitars that I don't like. Not all of them are. So um, we were talking earlier about being sensitive to price. I also, you know, I have great respect for builders of all styles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to stay true to myself Mm -hmm. and present guitars that are true to me. And this falls within that. Yeah. And and when you uh, are shopping for guitars... If the, the person who's selling you the guitar says, oh, you're going to love this one, I guarantee it. No, <laughs> just run away, yeah. right? Because you can't guarantee that somebody's going to like a sound. The best you can do is to listen and to trust your ears and trust what you hear and don't let other people tell you what you like, you know? And uh, you could read reviews and do your research, but ultimately trust what you like. Because if you don't, you're always going to have some reservations towards the instrument. Yeah. And don't feel strange about not liking someone that someone loves. Because the guitar has to give us what we crave. Absolutely. And it has to inspire us. And it's going to be different for everybody. So 
That's right. Trust, like like Tavi says, trust mm-hmm. your ear, trust your hands, mm-hmm. and if you're inspired by a guitar, you will know it. That's right. That's right. You will feel like home when you play yeah. it. Um, personally, Greg Smallman instruments, not my thing. I mm-hmm. cannot make those guitars sound good. I realize when I play them, I just can't make them sound yeah. good, but I love to hear John Williams play on right. one, yeah. which... You know, the guitar may not be the guitar for me, and yet I could still appreciate the quality of the Definitely. instrument in the hands of John Williams because that combo is a powerful combo. Okay, here. This one is um, a piece by Toroba, Toriha. Thank you. And I think the carbon strings really work well on the guitar. Uh, yeah, the strings I look at as tools to mm-hmm. when we have a guitar and the guitar has its tendencies. Mm-hmm. If we get to understand the different strings, the different materials and tensions, we can take that sound that the guitar has and tweak it to our mm-hmm. liking. And I find that with the lattice brace top, that these carbon strings are able to really pull yeah, what it what it needs out of it, um, and you can get this same guitar and put my hard tension nylon set, mm-hmm. and get a warmer treble, mm-hmm. maybe less uh, direct mm-hmm. attack, but uh, you can really manipulate the sound of the guitar with right. different string sets. Yeah, and as you purchase a guitar, just uh, try different sets of strings on the instrument, uh, and experiment. Um, and these are the strings that you have developed and some some of the nylon strings they have this old recipe right yes mix of materials and... my so I've been working with Labella Labella mm-hmm. manufactures mm-hmm. Pepe Romero strings mm-hmm. and my father and I created the line of strings uh, each set was balanced and chosen by my father of guitar sets mm-hmm. and then with the ukulele sets I balanced and chose all of those but the uh, he was talking to the owner of La Bella about nylon, and he said, I like how strings used to sound better. Mm-hmm. Why, why, did I, why do I like mm-hmm. the way they sounded in the 70s better mm-hmm. than they do now? And the answer was that the formula for making the nylon has changed over the years. Really? And my father asked if they could make him a set with the tension that he liked mm-hmm. in that vintage formula, but with modern technique. So uh, not the variations that used to come with mm-hmm. the old way of making strings, mm-hmm. but this, uh, not this set. So it's got the precision of a modern string, but 
Correct, but the sound and the makeup of that old string. Mm-hmm. So they're good. the Pepe Senior set is only available in hard tension. Mm-hmm. Have they don't have the slippery kind of more plastic yeah. nylon, which mm-hmm. modern sets are, mm-hmm. and uh, it gives you a little bit more grip, a little more control of the release of the right hand, yeah, uh, a little more warmth, but it doesn't. Uh, it's not rectified, mm-hmm. so it doesn't have mm-hmm. that squeak. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Can we take a look at a couple more guitars? Yes. Um, We are now seeing something really special. These are some of the guitars that you make yourself in your shop. Uh, Tell us about this guitar. This is by guitar number 376. It has a reversed five fan bracing system. And the soundboard comes from a piano that was built in 1893 in New York. Hmm. Uh, Working on a project which will yield about 22 instruments, guitars and ukuleles combined. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, last year I was given a piano that was from one family originally purchased in 1893. And it was passed down to their granddaughter uh, who sent it in to be repaired. And very sad story. The repairman gutted the piano for the ivory keys Mm -hmm. and left her a shell of a piano oh, goodness. and uh, it was devastating to her and to her family sure. and she had heard about a piano that I had turned into ukuleles last year from uh, that was a 1930s George Steck piano a friend of hers told her about that project and she asked me to do the same thing with her piano mm-hmm. and sort of give it a new life and mm-hmm. treat it with respect mm-hmm. and that's that's what I did and I'm in the middle of this 1893 piano project, I call it. And uh, it's an Adirondack spruce top. The body of this guitar is a Brazilian rosewood that was cut in the 1960s that was part of the Eurus Selton's wood collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eurus was a mentor of mine, a dear friend of the family. And when he moved to Spain a few years ago, I was able to, to get his rosewood and being able to build with that together with the piano top is is a very special project, Mm -hmm. a lot of fun, very inspiring. And uh, it sends me into the shop every day, you know, even Mm -hmm. that much more excited to Mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Um, Can we take a look at this? Yes, please. Um, The neck of this one feels, it feels your hand a little bit more than a slimmer profile. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so my own guitars, I like a thicker neck. Um, the reason I like a thicker neck is that I believe very much in the power of leverage. And when I, for myself, uh, also the guitars that I grew up with that my father was playing always had a larger neck. And when you squeeze something thin, it puts more stress on this joint and this muscle here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when you go to a th- something a little thicker, right, it's easier on these parts of your body and so that's where I gravitate towards a slightly thicker neck Mm -hmm. that's interesting most people would associate a thicker neck with harder to play but it's the opposite actually it takes less force Mm -hmm. in the hand Mm -hmm. to to do that Um, yeah and the action is still so low and and, um, so playable thank you Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try the trebles and see
beautiful, beautiful guitar. She likes you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, the feeling is mutual. Okay, this guitar, I'm looking at the sound hole, it seems to be a little bit different. What, what's different about this particular guitar? Um, I've been working lately with an experiment where I've taken the sound hole and brought it up on the body in effort to make a 650 guitar have a more grand sound like a 660 would. Mm -hmm. And by raising the sound hole up, what we see is an extended 19th fret. So if you just have a glance at the guitar, you might think this is a 20th fret. Mm -hmm. It's not. The sound hole comes up, and now behind the sound hole, you have a larger vibrating area of the top. Mm -hmm. The whole top mm -hmm. is in motion, but mm -hmm. the critical part would be below this main mm -hmm. brace here. And now I have a, a larger top to, mm -hmm. to move and vibrate, and it's going to give just a little bit warmer mm -hmm. tone be a little more mm -hmm. grand mm -hmm. um, and a side effect by doing that is that if you think of the top as a drum head you essentially have a bigger drum head and mm -hmm. the top can vibrate a little more mm -hmm. free mm -hmm. which lowers the tension a little bit and I'm feeling that in the left hand right. it's not something that I was trying to achieve mm -hmm. but a kind of a side effect of the experiment that I love mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't feel any diminished speed or mm -hmm. recovery of the mm -hmm. note, but it just is a little more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're not interrupting the vibrating top as much, right? Because you're moving it and then you have a larger surface to vibrate. Right. Yeah. So essentially, point. with the same bracing pattern, my fans get a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're talking about a, a centimeter. Mm -hmm. um, but it does make a difference. Which is a lot, yeah. When yeah. we're talking guitars, every yeah. little thing yeah. matters. So I'm uh, continuing to, to build instruments with this experiment and mm -hmm. some with the traditional sound hole placement and go back and forth and uh, something I'm having a lot of fun with. Great, awesome. Can we take a look at one more? The final guitar we're going to take a look at today is a... This is uh, Pepe Romero number 273, so one that I built myself mm -hmm. in my Oceanside workshop. It is a spruce top that's been exposed to the light so it's looking darker like cedar but uh, six i love i love when I the spruce too. gets that patina or it gets a little bit more yellowish as opposed to white yeah i love that too mm -hmm. this is a centenario model which is to honor what would have been my grandfather's 100th birthday so i started building these in 2013 mm -hmm. and you see a, a rope motif inlay around the body um it has a brazilian rosewood body 650 scale so yeah, number 273, it's had a few years to, uh, to open up and develop. Mm -hmm. And I think as I'll play this one, you'll hear that this guitar has, has had a, um, some playtime on it. Yes. As Tavi's getting ready to play, one thing that this guitar has is a brass nut. And sometimes a guitar will call for a brass nut. And hmm. if, when I use brass, it's because I want to give a little more edge to the note. If we think of the note as this round mm -hmm. thing and we want a penetrating note, we want, I want a big full note with a, with a pointed mm. end to it. I see. Some guitars have that naturally and some are a little darker. So um, for a while, I was building a seven reverse fan bracing that made very warm, round sound, and I was using a brass nut standard because mm -hmm. I wanted that little cutting metallic edge. The definition there. Yes. Yeah. Um, and this one was after I, I went to a five reverse fan bracing. They had that edge inherently. So I'm no longer using it as standard, but sometimes a guitar will call for that mm -hmm. brass nut. Mm -hmm. So it's another tool in, in the tool chest. Yeah, interesting. I have never seen anything like this. Yeah. I mean, I know I love it on the, on the right guitar. Sure. But it's part of the wonder of uh, instrument building. They're all different. Mm -hmm. And then to understand what we can do with strings or material of nuts. Yeah. To just tweak it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. I could hear that it's opened up right away.
it is to sit right next to you and experience this uh, in this proximity thank you for yeah, my for pleasure. having me sitting here of course i'm enjoying it so much uh, but I, i'm gonna try one more little portion just to see how the guitar behaves on the on the upper register Pepe, this is just really beautiful. Thank you very much. Yeah, I hope uh, you're enjoying this. I hope um, you've enjoyed this conversation. And for us, this is we're just hanging out, playing guitars, yeah. and uh, really, um, I hope that this is helpful as you uh, consider various guitars that you would want to purchase. It's helpful to you as you increase your discernment with regards to sound and. Um, instruments that are made out there um, and it just enjoys your pleasure in uh, continuing to pursue your guitar studies. Uh, Pepe, thank you so much for being here. Um, Pepe is going to be part of the LA Guitar Festival as a, one of the vendors for the vendor exhibit. Um, I don't know when you're watching this video but uh, right now it's uh, 2023 so I look forward to having you there. And uh, check out all these instruments. You could find them on Pepe's website, which is luthier.peperomero.com. Luthier.peperomero.com. You could also see these instruments and uh, purchase them through the Elite Guitarist website. Um, that is eliteguitarist.com. And you go to our store and uh, check out these instruments. Um, not the handmade instruments because the wait list is what it's years a four year wait for the for the guitars that I make myself but guitarist Romero are here mm -hmm. they're available uh, you can purchase through elite guitarist and I will still be the one doing the final setup and shipping them out that's right so it's a, a way that Tavi and I can really come together and help people find a guitar that's right for them and with the assurance that it will be really set up properly and feel good in your hands when it gets to you. Mm -hmm. and, and the setup could also be customized, right? If somebody likes higher action or lower action, it's much easier to do that in, in your shop rather yes. than you receive the guitar and then you have to find a repairman or uh, a right. shop that will perhaps they do adjustments. I, I will gladly take care of uh, all, all my customers mm -hmm. and uh, if something were to ever come up, you'll be dealing with me on that. Yeah. Wonderful. 
that's not a threat. That's a no, threat. not at all. <laughs> You'll be dealing with me. No, I, I say that in a in a loving way <laughs> as I build instruments to make beautiful music. I want them to sit in your hands and put you in a space where you can make beautiful music mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful to see uh, your family's legacy. It continues you. on, you know, through the music that... Uh, your father makes and, and uh, the music that's been made by the quartet and uh, and in a very tangible way it, it lingers on and it continues with uh, your skill in building Thank these you. guitars. I often feel that guitar luthiers are relegated to kind of a blurry background of the music but uh, the guitar is just an essential part of making music and definitely I mean it takes it takes the the composer to write mm -hmm. the music and the mm -hmm. guitarist to play the instrument. Mm -hmm. We need the audience. If mm -hmm. you simply enjoy music, you're crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to think about the trees that grew in the forest mm -hmm. and the birds that lived in mm -hmm. the tree and mm -hmm. the hundreds of years that those grew in the history. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a... If you really dive into what we're hearing the end result of a you know someone's performing making beautiful music it took many people mm -hmm. many years it took a lot of love a lot of uh, determination and practice but it also took mother nature growing mm -hmm. these beautiful mm -hmm. trees and turned into the instrument uh, yeah yeah we're all really brought together with music and it's yeah. something i think that uh, we all can feel and appreciate mm -hmm. and that's why we go to concerts that's, right. that's why we uh, we don't listen often to techno music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only when the car next to me is blasting. That's it. right, that's right. <laughs> because there is a beauty, there is a history, the, the, just the philosophical underpinnings yeah. of making music on the guitar are very different. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, brief conversation. We wish you the best. Press on with your guitar studies. Um, don't despair. Make a little bit of progress every day. If you have any questions, just send us an email. We'd love to answer it and help you out in your own journey. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.